hello info person, and if you're geeky enough, you probably know what this here is. And if you don't, well, let me explain this to you. This is actually something that I actively used in, I think about 20 years ago, when everyone around me was trying to create a really effective cooling device for their new gaming computers. And if it comes as a surprise to you, well, yeah, I was a huge gaming geek, and I guess in some sense still am. But back then, a lot of people were trying to cool down their systems by using what's known as a Pelletier device, also known as a Thermal Electric Generator, or TEG for short. In a nutshell, what TEG consists of are two wires and two kinds of metals squished in a sandwich-like formation. And then, if you run the electricity through this object, one of the sides becomes extremely hot, while the other side becomes extremely cold. And so, a lot of people would attach the cold side to their processors, and thus cool down their processors that way. Now, this might not actually be a very effective way today, especially for some of the more powerful computers that we have, but it still is used actively in, for example, refrigeration, such as in this uh, USB cooler that you see right here. It's also used in humidifiers and in a lot of other situations where, essentially by giving electricity, you need to somehow either produce heat or cold conditions. And so in that sense, TEGs that rely on what's known as a Seebeck effect are extremely useful. But naturally, like a lot of things in physics and really a lot of things when it comes to electricity, if you were to produce the opposite effect, for example, if you were to take the heat and apply it to one side, while then taking something cold and putting it on the other side, it would actually produce a little bit of electric current. And when I initially learned about this, my first thought was, well, can't we just use this for electricity, for production of electricity in our houses? Like maybe we can turn uh, glass into some kind of a Seebeck effect mechanism, and uh, one side that's colder, the outside, would allow us to produce some sort of an electric current. With the next obvious question being, can I take this off and put it on my body? and thus allow my body to generate the electricity? Well, all of these questions were answered by me pretty quickly when I realized that the current created was extremely small and, well, it was actually extremely inefficient as well. This here is actually one of the previous attempts made by scientists uh, from a few years ago when they tried to create, well, basically gloves that would allow us to create a little bit of electricity. But the Seebeck effect in general is still extremely useful. For example, the Perseverance probe that's currently on Mars is actually using this effect uh, combined with the heat generated by plutonium to generate all of the electricity it's going to need for the next few years. Although the battery that it's using is a lot more complicated. This is what it kind of looks like, with the plutonium itself being inside of this capsule that you see, where the heat itself is generated through radioisotopes. Essentially, plutonium, as it turns into another element, it releases a lot of heat, which is then converted to electricity. Once again, kind of similar to how this USB cooler works as well. But for years now, scientists have been actually trying really hard to still use this somehow and find a way to generate energy from our own bodies. I mean, if you remember Matrix, the entire premise of the movie was that human bodies are like walking batteries. You can technically use them to create energy. And pretty much every second you emit so much heat and so much energy that if you were to convert all of this to electricity, you could hypothetically produce a relatively large amount of energy. And on average, a human usually produces anywhere from 100 to maybe 150 watts of energy. That's kind of equivalent to a lot of laptops that we use today, and it's also equivalent to a lot of other electronics around us. And that's when you're resting. When you exercise, you produce even more heat and thus more energy. And because of this fascination with humans being free energy, several scientists behind the paper you can find in the description below decided to really take this to the next level. They actually were able to create this really cool wearable device that's able to produce way more energy than anything before it. And on top of this, this device seems to be able to heal itself. It also seems to be recyclable and not really damaging to the environment. And it's modular. They refer to it as a Lego-like. You basically can turn this into as many batteries as you want and put it all over your body if you want. And they refer to it as wearable TEG. And it kind of works like this. You can also find more information in the video in the description. Basically, you have these tiny motherboards, each of them responsible for generating energy. And they're all attached to this really, really cool material that's designed to be stretchy. In other words, you can put it anywhere on your skin. And it's also designed to repair itself. It's essentially made with these polymers that allow it to heal itself after it's cut or when it's damaged. 
Something similar was discussed in one of the previous videos with another invention, using a somewhat similar element to this as well. So this is definitely not something that's newly discovered, but they were able to combine all of this into something that's also recyclable. In other words, by putting this into a solution, you can now get rid of things that you don't need anymore, with certain parts being reusable, such as these tiny generators you see sticking out. And you can put as many of them as you want, depending on the amount of energy you want to produce. Okay, well that's cool and all, but how much energy can you possibly produce from this? Are we still talking about microvolts and mini watts here? Something that I was basically producing when I tried to strap this on myself? And something that would definitely not power anything? Or is it something more substantial? Well, in this case, this tiny device that's about one square centimeter is able to produce about one volt of energy. And that's way, way more than any previous attempts. And most of all, this is actually more than enough for most wearable devices that we have today. It will be more than enough for your smartwatch. It would also probably be enough to keep some sort of a tracker or some sort of a band that you might wear for health reasons, constantly charged and operating without any battery. And best of all, it scales to large amounts, which means that you could potentially even have a bunch of these on your arm and thus be able to charge your cell phone. That's right, by eating a burger, you could technically charge your smartphone. That's kind of mind-blowing. But the mind-blowing part here is that not that it's an original idea or that they created something no one else had before, because this is something that many people have tried. The mind-blowing part here is that it seems to work and it seems to work pretty well. For example, there have been many attempts to try to use excess heat in cars to try to use a similar technique to produce energy there. It succeeded to some extent, but it's still not really that commercially viable. There's also at least one major study that mentions we could hypothetically produce a tremendous amount of energy using this technique by putting a lot of these TEGs somewhere in the ocean and then by using heat generated through hydrothermal vents, we could hypothetically produce enough electricity to power a city. And so there's definitely a lot of uses for this type of technology, but it's really the wearable technology right now that's going to be making a difference, simply because we have so many tiny devices around us and so many devices requiring energy that using this technology, this wearable, flexible, recyclable, and in some sense modular technology could actually save us from producing tons of batteries that are already kind of reaching a crisis. There are a lot of batteries being produced out there and many of them are slowly turning into a new pollutant. And one of the main reasons why this device would work so well is actually because our bodies are able to control their temperature and are able to maintain the temperature at roughly around 36 degrees Celsius when you're healthy and when you're not sick. And obviously when you have fever, you can produce even more energy. But that's obviously not the topic we're discussing here. The idea of us being a constant energy producer is definitely a niche that needs to be developed more and something that we need to kind of consider as more and more devices are introduced into our pockets, on our wrists, and of course other devices that we're not even aware of yet. Like for example, a few years ago nobody knew that these little things are going to take over the world and that everyone is going to have them as well. And that's just another wearable that requires a battery. And because of the use of these polymers on the inside, these devices are not going to break very easily, unlike some of the previous attempts scientists tried to generate in the past. The main problem with a lot of these wearable devices was that they were actually kind of brittle. They would usually break pretty quickly and would not really be usable after only a few weeks. And the scientists here speculate that by having some sort of a wrist-like device very similar to this, you would be able to generate around 5 volts of electricity, which is the same voltage that a typical smartphone uses as well. Although in this case it might not actually be enough to constantly run a cell phone, mostly because the amount of energy is still going to be much lower, but it might be enough to recharge your smartphone, assuming that you keep it in your pocket. And when you're done with it, you can easily recycle all of this, not really creating any new trash. Although to be honest, this is not the only such research from the last few years. As a matter of fact, only a few months ago there was another very similar creation, the image for which you see right here, that's also basically able to do something similar. The only main difference though is the energy produced. This version here produces a few times less energy than the device you see right here mentioned in the paper. And even that is not the only version. There's even something like this that's also from a few months ago that unfortunately produces even less energy. So in that sense, it's basically an extremely exciting area of study right now as a lot of different scientists from around the world are trying to find a way to generate energy from the natural heat of our body. And that means that possibly in the next few years we'll actually have, finally at least, the actual commercial version of all of this 
something that we might be able to use in daily life and something that might in some way improve our lives as well. We obviously don't really know what it's going to be just yet, but it's probably going to be something very similar to what you see on the screen, although maybe a little bit better looking. But until someone actually creates something commercially viable, and until we know what's going to happen to all of this, that's unfortunately all I wanted to mention. Check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support the channel on Patreon, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description, or by joining the channel membership to help this channel grow. Either way, come back tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye bye.